Hello and welcome everybody to Join Dota League season number 3. It's the first game of the Join Dota League Asian Division 1 at least for this season. It's going to be Myth Trust versus Kingdom as yes, the last pack that there loads in as well. But we are of course Hefla TV. My name is Coucher and I am joined by Whiplash. Hey, what's going on Coucher? And hello to everybody out there. I am excited to get the cast Kingdom versus Myth Trust. I haven't casted Myth Trust since they were in the qualifiers for the International 3, and uh, a friend of mine, Tootie, is on Kingdom, so... Egger, excuse me, ugh. Tongue twister there, let me get that out of the way early on in the cast, but I'm excited to see these teams play. Yeah, it's actually... I have cast a Kingdom when they were in Division 2 last season, as well as them being in the Division 1-2 playoffs for the spot in Division 1. And it's their first game in Division 1, so playing with the so-called peak boys now. And we'll get to see how well they can just hold their own. Yeah, indeed. Uh, draft's still just barely getting underway, so... Um, yeah, I am excited to see them kind of play a little bit more with the big boys. Uh, 2D, for those of you who don't know, uh, he's the player that uh, I know on Kingdom. And he actually was in the Korean Dota 2 League for the first season. He came over to Korea and played a little bit with a team called Monkey Spanner. He's good friends with uh, another foreigner in Korea, Karn. So that's uh, kind of my relation to him. And uh, of course, everyone should know Mythtrust by this point. Um, maybe they've had a few roster changes here and there, but uh, they've actually been around for a good amount of time, uh, considering how volatile the sea scene can be uh, at times. Yeah, they really have. They had, I think, two players being changed. KYT and my pro, I think, came in, if I'm not mistaken. So, still, I mean, the core of them has been there for a long while, especially Lakels, their carry player. He's been a part of Myth Trust for well, as long as I can remember, which isn't maybe that long because my memory kind of sucks, but coming back to this draft, just 100% standard, I guess. Although, Skyrim Mage actually has been overlooked, at least so far, whereas Kingdom having a Doombringer now and up against a Tidehunter and a Viper. Yeah, well, it's interesting that uh, the C teams, they always value Viper highly. Like, this is a hero that um, sometimes in other areas of the world he is picked, but maybe not, like, first pick material, and sometimes even he'll be banned very early on into the draft. But when it comes to the Southeast Asian scene, this guy uh, gets a lot of playtime. And, of course, looking at the other heroes here, of course, you know, Doom, Tidehunter, uh, Tidehunter... Would you say he's actually the best offlaner at this point? Because I kind of have a feeling in the current meta he is. Yeah, I, I think so. It's either Tidehunter or maybe the Centaur. Depending on, of course, your overall just uh, team composition there. No, I'm not counting Faces Void, by the way. Yeah, There's I'm like, not. I... Yeah, dedicated offlaners. Yes. I mean, I think Tidehunter or Centaur are probably the best at the moment. The best Path Rider is definitely up there as well. It's just not as popular anymore. Although, I still think the hero is just crazy strong. Yeah, certainly. Uh, I know that the, the Chinese teams still definitely value the Bat Rider pretty highly in far in terms of picks and bans. Uh, to wow, Kingdom really thinking a lot about the second pick here. They're already moving into their reserve time. They have a minute left on that. So, this early in the draft, that is a, a bit of a concern. Maybe they weren't expecting these two heroes getting picked up so early, but... They'll go ahead and grab the Ancient Apparition. I yeah, mean, I thought like, usually it's going to be like Sky of Mage almost every single time. But to be honest, the Tidehunter and the Viper both are extremely tanky heroes. So the Mystic Flare might even not be enough to just take those heroes down. And of course, Ancient Apparition. I am just hoping the Kingdom will go for some proper setup now for the Ice Blast as well. But if anybody gets hit by an Ice Blast and is tombed at the same time, there's just no escaping that almost. Yeah, maybe they'll add a little bit more uh, global presence into this lineup, whether it be like a Sunstrike Invoker, or maybe like a Nature's Prophet. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing those uh, in the current lineup, uh, if Kingdom decides to uh, run the Doom kind of like in the safe lane or maybe even mid, uh, instead of off lane, that would open up the position for that Nature's Prophet. But uh, looking at these other bands that coming th that are uh, coming through, we have the Shadow Shaman, Death Prophet, banned by Kingdom. Uh, not huge surprises there. I think if the Death Prophet joined Myth Trust's lineup, then the tankiness would just be uh, a little bit too much, maybe out of control even. And also the the Morphling and Sand King banned out by Myth Trust, so just um, you know a very popular and powerful carry, especially in the C scene. The Morphling 
you know, removed from the books and then Sanking as well. Uh, a very good support in the current meta being uh, removed as well. Yeah, it's... I mean, I guess Sanking isn't as popular anymore, at least with most teams. But still overall a really annoying hero to play up against. If you just guess that early blink dagger, you can set up so much across the map. But Myth Trust picking up a Lich now, I mean, I don't really see how much it's gonna do in regards of countering heroes or something. Usually it's like when you're up against a Lifestealer, for example, you want the Ice Armor for sure. But of course, just keeping the towers alive and having a Chain Frost to just throw into the Ravage, it's a potential for a crap ton of damage. But, I mean, what do we make of that pick? I feel like Lich is actually undervalued by a lot of uh, teams as well as players. I mean, this hero... Sometimes you could even put him in the offlane. It's, it's pretty rare to see him there, but uh, he can be annoying in some situations. And yeah, the, that first uh, Chain Frost, it will pierce through BKB immunity uh, as far as the stun is considered. So that's a lot. That's a big part of the, the Lich that I feel a lot of people underestimate. And just, I mean, whatever lane he's in, you're, you're going to have a, at least some type of noticeable advantage. But Kingdom, they'll go ahead and pick up the Ember Spirit. So... Uh, they have some potential late game. They have a lot of burst in the mid game with this hero. Personally, uh, one of my favorite heroes is the C. But he'll probably be in the mid or safe lane, and this is making it more likely that it will just be a, a doom in the off lane. Yeah, it most likely is. And Ember Spirit, I mean, he can definitely be strong, but I guess the Flame Guard is good against Leech, who can just spam the Frost Blast so often. But. All in all, I think Viper deals well enough against an Ember Spirit if they should match up in the mid lane. So, do you think Ember Spirit can get enough farm or just try to kind of snowball? Because Ember Spirits, they're not really the best comeback kind of heroes if you fall behind early. If you already have like a decently done Battle Fury, then yes, your farm rate will be decent enough. But if you just don't get to that first Battle Fury for a long time, it's extremely hard to just make an impact. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the, the thing with Ember Spirit is you can kind of be a little bit behind, but if you have a good team fight and grab like two or three kills, you're completely back into the game. So uh, in some situations where maybe he doesn't have an amazing start, but the team's doing okay, uh, he definitely has catch up potential. But if uh, his team's doing bad across the board, that's when Ember Spirit will really start to suffer. And when I look at Myth Trust's lineup, they're going to be pretty tanky. Uh, the Lich, maybe not so much, but the Frost Armor will still be a little bit annoying against the Ember Spirit. And uh, it would be really difficult for him to fight against the Viper in the mid lane. So uh, if that happens, he, he pretty much already has lost the lane, I feel. It's it's very hard for the Ember Spirit to be good against Viper without, like, um, you know, rotations coming in from the supports. But Myth Trust, they're going to throw the Enigma into the mix. So... It's starting to feel very wombo combo -y at this point, uh, as far as their uh, team fight is considered. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty sick. Ravage to probably set up the black hole to begin with. Of course, depending, maybe Enigma can spot an opening himself, but usually it's like Ravage into black hole, then Chain Frost just bouncing around. And the most Enigma, I just love that they got some additional lockdown now, because Enigma, of course, also has the Malphite just to stop TPs or anything. Because other than that, they only had like ultimates, either the Ravage or the Lich, but that's also just a mini stun from the first bounce. But wow, Kingdom, picking up a tree and protector, I guess they really want to just keep the Ember Spirit and the towers alive. But I'm not too sure how well that hero will fare here. Yeah, well, I mean, he he's pretty tanky. Uh, he has a strength hero after all. Uh, bring some early game presence as well with that Leech Seed ability. And the uh, survivability of Living Armor is... Actually really effective on Ember Spirit, and it'll even help out Doom a lot as well, because uh, he doesn't really have any base armor. Um, also, another thing I was thinking about, Myth Trust have a lot of heroes that you may want to just throw that Doom on. So it's going to be kind of a... Uh, Doom's presence definitely won't be felt as much, I feel, this game. Because, yeah, you lock down one hero, but there's still so much else you need to worry about. And uh, even like the Viper, his uh, Corrosive Skin will be disabled when you uh, throw the Doom on him. So even though you wouldn't think of him as a hero uh, in initially that you'd want to Doom, he actually can be a pretty good Doom target in some situations. But yeah, the, the Tramp Protector overall, uh, we'll actually see how it works. It's, I don't know, like, maybe it'll help Ancient Apparition get a good Ice Blast off or something, but uh, beyond that and helping out a little bit in the earlier stages, uh, 
maybe kind of uh, not the best pickup. We'll see what they do as far as like rotations go. Yeah, and actually the last band, the Dragon Knight by Kingdom, I think it's a pretty smart band to be honest. I definitely could have seen it fit into Mythrust. Just have extremely strong solo lanes and Lich just rotating around helping wherever necessary. But to pick up an Invoker, so I guess it helps to the same extent a little bit. And having the Forge Spirits Invoker, if he goes to Exhort in the mid lane against Ember Spirit, he should do rather well there as well. Just the Forge Spirits, getting even more minus armor, or not even more, but any kind of minus armor against Ember Spirit. Who I lost the couch short if you're uh, trying to talk, by the way. I can't hear you. You're not talking in a mumble. What? Man, it's, it must be on your end. Oh, I heard you for half a second. Oh man, Where you at, it, man? it shows I'm talking on mumble, so I have no idea, man. Okay, I can hear you now. I missed uh, whatever you said over the past 30 seconds or so. It's fine. <laughs> no biggie. It's fine. Okay, well, Naga Siren is the last pickup for Kingdom. That's definitely giving them some late game presence. Uh, based on the other heroes that have been picked up, it's, it's pretty much guaranteed that it will be a carry, so... I'm wondering if they put the Naga mid or the Ember Spirit mid. Uh, that will be the, the question here, I suppose, depending on who likes to play what and what lane they'll end up in. Uh, from the other end, Lakels, I, I guess, will be um, in the safe lane, I'm thinking, and Invoker mid, but they could go either way. Yeah, I think it's going to be smarter if Kingdom send the Naga Siren mid, I think. Naga Siren can just get guaranteed farm no matter what, just create the illusions, spam Riptide, get some harass into the enemy as well, and not really be afraid of too much as well. We have a straight out pause and smashy disconnect. <laughs> typical, typical C Dota, but that's just the way it is. So, yeah, we're probably looking at a Naga Siren in the mid lane. I would be surprised uh, if it was otherwise. Uh, also, definitely if it's a Viper mid then the Naga Siren will fare uh, a lot better uh, against uh, the Viper as opposed to the Ember Spirit, but Ember Spirit's just as fine in the safe lane uh, as he is in the mid. Some people like to use the bottle a little bit more with him, others maybe not so much. And uh, once you hit that level 6 though, you can always like TP home and regenerate if you need to and then instantly come back to the lane with very minimal downtime. Yeah, and I mean, I think just Naga Siren would do better against both the Invoker and the Viper probably. Of course, I mean, Mythrust, if they really want to, they can even run something crazy like a dual mid lane with Lich, although I don't really see it happening, rather a dual off lane. I mean, Tidehunter is a pretty tanky hero and just hard to kill overall. Just combo him up with a Lich on that off lane. I don't think there would be too much Kingdom can do, even with that Ensnare Cold Feet combination. Yeah, well, I mean, if. Either look uh, if Lukels went to the safe lane, he could still solo fairly well against like the Doom, who will end up in the off lane, and that does kind of free up the Lich to help out the mid lane if uh, he so desires. So really, Myth Trusta, they have a lot of heroes that are kind of good soloing on their own. The the Lich can kind of come in and help out here and there wherever needed. So there's a, a lot of flexibility in what they have in front of them, and what they can do. I like it. You mean if it should be a Viper against Doombringer? The Viper should just kind of stomp the Doombringer there. And yep. Well, at least we now know what the issue is as well. He's restarting the modem and he's back online, so should be back in Dota as well. Alright, wonderful. Let's see him pick up his hero. He has reconnected. And then we'll get, get this one underway. There we go. Alright, uh, I suppose we shall go ahead and introduce these teams. Uh, the pause, the unpause will be coming any sec now, but um, I want to go ahead and introduce Kingdom first. Over on the Ember Spirit, we have the, the player known as Draken, or Drakan. And then as the support Ancient Apparition, we'll have Fruits. Moving over to the Doom, who will be in the off lane, it's 2D. And then most likely mid Naga Siren, it's Fixers. Finally, <clears throat> support number two, it will be Smashy as that tree and protector. And for Myth Trust, up on the Radiant side, Noki will be playing on the Enigma. KYT, the offline tide hunter as my pro, will be on the invoker Momo to play the Lich and Lakels, of course, being their carry viper. So I guess it's gonna be a viper safe lane then. And oh, some catchy tunes. Mm. I think that's my phone. Hold on a second. Sorry. I'm pretty sure it's yours. Yes. <laughs> All right. I, I gotta take this. It's an important phone call. Unfortunately, very Just very sorry. Yourself, then. No problem. Uh. And cool tunes, we got to hear some cool tunes, guys. But no worries. 
Don't think we'll see too much action anyway while he's gone. But yes, KYT hitting offlane at the moment, Lich. He might even not go into the offlane, just deny one creep to make the Tide Hunter's life a little bit easier. Make it so that the Dire Creeper will actually push it, push itself towards the tier 1 tower on the top. So Tide Hunter, guaranteed level 2 at the very least, just Kraken Shell and the Anchor Smash already will just be a great asset to him, or to be fair. And I'm a little bit afraid for Doombringer here. Yes, he's gonna be probably up against the Viper who is gonna be most of the time solo. But even then, just the poison attack, it's gonna be so annoying against the Doombringer. Doombringer, there's literally nothing he can, he can do in return. So, hoping for the Doom's sake that 2D, he gets himself a nice creep that gives himself a good aura. Maybe get the toughness aura, get, get the extra armor. Maybe even get a Satyr Hellcoral caller. Just to have that health region aura, which is actually pretty damn excellent to have. It's almost like a ring of health, just for free. And if by some chance you can get some harass on the enemy, the shockwave from the hell setter is going to be pretty good as well. Although, Doom's mana pool just doesn't allow him to do too much there. But, the horn has blown, the creeps are underway as well. We will see if they make something crazy out of their lanes. At the moment, Momo is actually just body blocking up the top lane. Ah, failed a little bit. Okay, wait, can he take it over? Yes, he can. Body blocking for the win. One creep, of course, has been denied already as well. So this lane should be going pretty good for them, I think. Ember Spirit with a level 1 searing chain shouldn't be too much of a threat as far as just getting the cold feet proc is concerned. And, of course, 3M Protector. Yes, if he can get close, his right clicks hurt a crap ton. But can he get close? That's the biggest issue here. I mean, the 1 second searing chain is definitely aren't enough to just prop the cold feet maybe with the leech to help out but even so and looking at mid lane already the fixers taking some heavy harassment from my pro just going in with those right clicks as an extra invoker which of course they do hurt quite a lot to get the moment though went into the jungle found himself the toughness aura from that wild wing ripper and now well it helps him a little bit against viper of course viper wants to just be extremely abusive with his right clicks and that's what he's doing already. I mean, there's a double damage on 2D, but he can only use it to just last it creeps under the tower. Which is better than nothing, I guess. Mid lane, my pro. At the moment, 5 and 1 compared to 3 and 0. I mean, this early on, there shouldn't be much of a difference. And oh, my pro, man, he cold snapped that creep. If the cold snap had actually landed on fixers, fixers might have been a kill very well. Actually, like, Sunstrike completely random as well. Not even getting elastic or anything. Just mispredicting the Naga Siren's movement and with this, he actually wasted a lot of mana and Expert Invokers, they don't have too much mana regen at all and KYT, he's left alone now, the Lich, is he level 2? Yes he is! Maybe he wants to get a rune, just get a haste or something and go into mid lane, set up a kill on fixers, or just deny him getting the bottle and oh it's a regen rune as well! Such an important deny here from Momo, really nicely done by support and that's exactly what all the support should do when you actually have the space to leave your... Laner solo. Yes, looking at bottom lane, Lakels, of course, 9 and 3 compared to 6 and 3 on 2D, so 2D. Not that far behind, but I think as Viper is gonna gain more and more levels, get more points into the Frost attack, Poison attack, as well as the Nether Toxin, he's gonna just keep on pulling farther and farther ahead. As my pro. He's just farming away. As is Naga Siren, to be honest, I mean, Fixers is exactly the same as the Invoker 11 and 1 for both of them. And you can't really shut down a Naga Siren unless you have some rotations or just completely outplay him. And maybe, just maybe, if my pro had landed that Cold Snap earlier on onto the hero, not the creep, and the Sunstrike to follow, potentially could have been a kill. And now there's another Cold Snap, actually, he's going for it. Will we see a Sunstrike as well? He's holding on to it that they want the Sunstrike coming up, but a nice dodge, but it doesn't matter, or does it? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Mirror image disjoint, the last right click, it would have been his death. Just fixers, holding is cool, disjointing when necessary with the mirror image and of course just touching the sun strike as well, really well played and now the bottle comes in and suddenly my pro, he needs to be a little bit careful because if fixers just runs at him, he has boots speed and that's exactly what he's going for. The riptide comes out, a few more right clicks, can he actually do it? Nope. He has to back off, doesn't want to dive the tower. But Evoker, does he have any regeneration coming in? Yes, a healing cell and a clarity but... Having to just waste gold on that is never a good thing if you're in the mid lane. And the invoker, definitely not the most casual of uh, bottle builders. 
So can't get reached in that way and Noki. Farming up the jungle at the moment. 2D trying to be a pain in the ass. Just steal some or just maybe even block some camps. At the moment just going for the rune instead. And oh a haste rune, definitely a bad thing to get. Viper can't really kill you if you have a haste. I mean his slows just won't do much of anything. But then again, once the haste wears off, oh he's gonna save the haste rune for Naga Seren as it is. But nonetheless, luck kills. Once he hits that level 6, Viper Strike onto 2D might be enough to just get the kill. We'll see how well Nagasaran can put that haste rune to use. I mean, he can definitely use it to either just go super aggressive or maybe even get a nice escape away from Invoker. Looking at the top lane though, Tide Hunter. Oh, might be in trouble. The Searing Chaser coming out there. Only little one that they're gonna go for Momo. He's taking a lot of damage. Leech it up as well. And that's gonna be the first part for the Drakan. I mean, yes, the Tide Hunter is a tanky target, but Lich. Definitely not, so one base armor, no boots of speed to just make the run away as well. So Kingdom, 4 minutes, 50 seconds in, they finally claim first blood. Really well done by them as fixers. His haste came out, his bottle growing, so had to use it before, of course. Going for some Riptide action onto my pro, but neither side should be just too unhappy about their situation in the mid lane. Both are getting a reasonable amount of farm, although if you ask me, it's definitely gonna be scarier on fixers. As the cold snap comes out from my pro, he saw the fixers was getting just a little bit too eager there, going in with the Riptide, maybe trying to set up a potential kill even. So just cold snap him up, make sure that he backs off. And actually, with the bottle coming out for fixers, my probe 4 sec as no fixers backs off in time. With another cold snap, Sunstar combination could have been enough to just get the kill. But fixers just playing it at a safe distance. And when the bottle is coming out, oh the Sunstrike is there with the cold snap! Oh a little bit too soon though with the Sunstrike. Didn't think that Fixers can run away that fast, I guess. Hey, Coucher, I'm back, by the way. What did I miss, man? You just missed First Blood and... Some harassment, I guess, going left and right. Nothing too big. Okay. Alright, well, let me get uh, acclimated into this game and then I can I can help. I can add in the play-by-play -play and all the, the fun stuff. Yeah, actually, Noki might be in trouble and snared up. He denied the room, but oh, 2D, he comes in doomed uh -oh. up. Well, Enigma is a goner for sure. Yeah, maybe if he's lucky, he can get his uh, Eidolons to deny himself, and he actually does. So, you know, making the best out of uh, a bad situation. Denying that experience as well as the gold. So that's nice. A little bonus for him. And uh, that that does mean the Doom's kind of uh, forced out and wasted on the Enigma. Yeah, it's... I mean, Enigma definitely did what he should there, just getting the deny on himself. Although at the moment, Enigma, his farm hasn't been as fast as you would think, considering that none of his camps were actually blocked. I mean, yes, 2D came in to steal a few creeps every now and then with the Devour. Other than that, though, Noki just not having the fastest of farms, but not slow by any means either as far as just last hits go. And do they really want to go for the push now? I mean, he's on the lane after all. Yeah, that's true. Maybe, we'll have to see. Alright, there is a TP coming into the bottom lane. This is Lich. So, um, well, the push could commence. There is a few Eidolons. And, I mean, it's it's just the Tree and Protector really defending. We'll see the the Doom. Tutti, he is rotating in as well. They throw down the, the Fortification. And let's not forget, if they don't kill this tower, then the, the Living Armor will just help bring it back up to full health eventually. Yeah, just such an annoying ability, but looks like they really want to go in. I mean, another creep wave is coming. Even KYT is there with a Ravage if it's like really necessary. And since the Scorch Earth already used on 2D, if it wears off, it really can't come back in. Otherwise, Viper Strike and almost certain death. Yeah, Kingdom are actually doing a pretty good job though. They, they pulled all of the creeps back and uh, really have uh, caused some delay here. Then there's a black hole on the TPN from Drake, and can they finish him off though? A Ravage follow up with the Sun Strike. What a wombo combo. They're going to get a 2D on the back end of this as well. It's looking like this tier 1 tower will end up falling eventually. Yeah, that was really well done by Noki. He was just not afraid at all to use his black hole this early on. And to much that's a uh, feature I love to say in Enigma players. Or overall, just playing any hero that has such a big wombo or just big ultimate overall. If you're too afraid to use it, you might just miss so many opportunities. And this early on... There won't be too many for like the biggest black holes ever anyway, I think. So just put it on cooldown and of course two kills secured. So just excellent usage. 
Yeah, swing things uh, right back into Myth Trust's favor, or at least evening them out as far as the kills are concerned. Uh, they've also taken a 2k golden experience lead at this point, even almost uh, up to 3k, I want to say. So, Myth Trust, you know, they're getting into a pretty decent position behind taking that tower. And it uh, doesn't look like there's really too much kill potential in the top lane, man. This Tidehunter, I see the Ember Spirit wanting to be aggressive, but he's, he's not really able to actually do anything against him. Already. Uh, up to level 7, this Tidehunter is compared to the, the 5 of the Ember Spirit and the Apparition. Yeah, at least the Apparition is really close to level 6, so he'll get it like 10 minutes in or so. And just having the Ice Blast... Oh, as early bottom as lane though. No. They throw Doom on the Viper. We'll see a slow uh, down on him with the Leech Seed, but man, Blood Kells, even with 0 points and Corrosive Skin, he's still pretty damn tanky. But I think uh, another right click, yeah, the Doom will eventually tick down on him. And Rakels falls with the... Uh, them getting a kill on Kingdom's End. Yeah, and actually the Tidehunter went down top lane as well, so... I don't know if the Ice Blast was used, I guess it was, it's a cooldown after all, so... Just getting two kills, two high priority ones at the same time. Really good for them, and... I just think like one point into Corrosive Skin might have made the difference, just get the slow on Kingdom, so they wouldn't be able to just chase and right-click him, so, right him so easily, but Viper... By the looks of it, he's going for a Vanguard, and... I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of that item at all, especially on a Viper. And... I'm not too sure about you, but I think there would have been better items to go for. Uh, it, I feel like it's kind of a situational item on him. If there's a lot of kind of weaker physical damage, then it can be a good pickup. But mid lane, there's going to be an end. Onto the Enigma. He's surrounded by all sides and Doom. Chasing him down with the Scorch Dirt. He's just too low. Can't survive that. Well, at least uh, they, they, they diverted the attention of Kingdom, so they got the tower hit. So it wasn't a kill and a deny. I mean, it's a minor positive, but nonetheless, tower down, getting some map control, getting some global gold as well. And of course, my pro on the Invoker has had his hand of Midas for almost two minutes now. So just farming up, but Ice Blast flying top lane. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, nothing follow up though. I, if, maybe if someone else is with the Ember Spirit, they could have uh, made a kill happen. But with three members up there, now a fourth joining, it looks like Myth Trust, they want to go ahead and push another tower. They've got the bottom. They've got the mid, the top tier one's the only one really remaining on uh, Kingdom's End. Yeah, and actually Lakels might be in trouble once again. Smashy, hanging around, Doom does have his ultimate, but Lakels is deeping top instead. So they want to go for some kind of fight, and Lakels has himself a casual cloak so far. I wouldn't mind it at all if he turned it into a pipe, to be honest. I mean, against uh, an ancient apparition and probably and ra a radiance to come later on as well. Yeah, most likely. Also, uh, Naga will indeed getting uh, the mid tower. So, at least one going towards Kingdom's Way, but the tier two. Myth Trust, they just want to straight up Death Ball push this. They have the ultimates for for their important heroes. And I think they can actually just take team fights, man. This is very, uh, you know, TI4 style where you just get that big Death Ball uh, hero composition and just push, push, push uh, until the enemy team eventually crumbles. Yeah, Kingdom definitely aren't the best in just taking a team fight. although there is still no mech, but the whole luck else is going so deep! Holy crap, man. Uh, I guess uh, space created somewhat, but uh, he may even still survive. There's the overgrowth. Uh, Ancient Apparition Ice Blast comes out. They finish off Lakels, but Black Hole onto Draken. Can they finish him off before he gets away? He's so low. Down he goes. Now they're going to turn onto the Invoker. And down he falls. It turns up being actually, it's a 4 for 2, maybe. They even get the Apparition, or the Enigma, excuse me. Now he's gonna try to teleport away, and a nice job using the level death just to make sure the TP is interrupted. Myth Trust will, they won't even get the tower, I think. It's going to get denied. Yeah, actually the Living Armor came out and they still <laughs> tried to deny it a little bit, but might survive. Yeah, he needed two more right clicks from the Catapult. But in the meantime, in Fixer, he got the tier two mid lane as well, so he's up to 2k gold already, thanks to that highest net worth in the game. And I just think Myth, they actually lost all of their heroes, if I'm not mistaken, right? That was just way too eager, they didn't yeah, have the mech did. ready, could have waited for that. I mean, Enigma had the mech, but it just needed to be brought out to him. And with the mech, might have been a whole different fight, but just going over eager Lakels, not being able to do too much of anything, just getting doomed up, and just giving too much space to Kingdom like that. Yeah, uh... Yeah, man, uh, you don't want to give space to the Naga. And especially, like, let's think about this. Kingdom, they defended pretty much 4v5 in the top lane, and they wiped out Myth Trust. And this is a team that, uh, they, they have some late game, they have great team fight. But 
if you look at Kingdom's End, they have a Naga Siren, Ember Spirit, Doom, the Apparition. It's just the late game is totally in Kingdom's Court. And if they're already taking fights at this point in the game into their favor and giving the Naga a lot of space on the map, I, that's pretty much a sign of uh, things that come for Kingdom. Yeah, it most certainly is. And actually, one thing that Kingdom is, maybe a slight misstep or not communicating, is that they're going for double urn. One on Smashy as well as one on Fruits. So both supports have the urn. I mean, it's a good item, I guess, just getting some mana regeneration, but just one pair of Arcane Boots probably would have been a bit better there. Yeah, I have to agree. I mean, the urns, um, getting the stacks on the urn, they don't, um, they don't, I guess, um, the only one person gets the urn stack or the urn charge when uh, an enemy hero dies around them. So it's not like they both will stack up together. And Mistrust heading towards that bottom lane. They want to do more pushing once again. Just trying to take objectives, it it almost feels like desperate from them and the way they're they're handling this game now because uh, they, they lost that last fight pretty harshly and uh, the Naga Siren on the other side of the map but if she really needs to she can uh, come in with that uh, scroll of TP. Invoker not part of the team fight however so that's a, another important thing to note uh, for Myth Trust. And we'll go ahead and see Doom onto the Viper once again. Uh, out comes a pretty decent Lich ultimate. It's bouncing around a little bit. AA alt as well. It's the Doom for the Viper trade. But Kingdom, they're full on charging. No, wait. They decided to just back away. They've defended the tier 2 tower in the bottom lane pretty easily. Just helped regenerate it up living armor. And uh, I guess, you know, just decently even trade across the board. I suppose the Kel's a little bit of a higher priority uh, than 2D. Yeah, probably. I mean, he's the one supposed to hard carry this game, probably. I mean, Invoker can help out. Expert Invoker's right click is pretty damn decent, but he's building a Necrobook as well, so they definitely want to push faster. But look at this top tier too, it's back to full HP, well, 9 HP missing from full, but... Wow. Like living armor, man. That's the power of living armor. This this tower was like one or two right clicks from being dead, just like two minutes ago, man. It's ridiculous, this ability really helping out uh, Kingdom a lot and just uh, keeping these towers alive. Yeah, and actually Fixer, he's only about 300 gold away from getting his Sacred Relic as well on the Naga Siren, so... Unless he just uh, gets picked off a couple of times in a row now, he's gonna have his Radiant by probably 18 or 19 minutes into the game, I think. Especially yeah, if they should if, get like one extra tower somewhere. Yeah, if, and if they keep all of their tier 2 towers by the time Naga has Radiance... Oh man, that is that is just not the position you want to be in as Myth Trust. Uh, generally with the Naga Siren, uh, she is going to drag her team behind a little bit in the earlier stages often because she has to focus so hard in farming that Radiance and just staying alive and uh, taking up the jungle or whatever lane she's in. But, you know, once that's over, she creates space for your team instead of the other way around. Yeah, and actually looking at the graphs, you can see it's been kind of up and down. Gold graph, not that big of a difference, I guess, from 4k to now 2k. But look at the XP, it was a 6k swing after that one team fight at the top lane, at the top tier 2, but now it's almost zeroed out again. And that just goes to show that Myth, at the moment at least, they're farming a little bit more efficiently, just farming up the jungle a little bit faster maybe, but that will change so much once the Radiance comes out. Indeed. Well, Myth Trust, uh, are they actually trying to push another tower? Because they are near the tier 2 in the mid lane. They've brought four of their members here. The fifth one, the Tidehunter coming in. His Ravage will be off of cooldown by the time he gets here. So maybe just waiting for the this next Catapult Creep Wave. A little bit of a Searing Chains onto the Viper, but nothing really happening overall. The, the Naga Siren on the back end of this gets the top tier 1 tower. And with that, man, that's enough for the Sacred Relic. Yeah, I mean, he's only about 400 gold away of actually getting the Radiance completely finished now. And he's not alleviating the pressure at all, just going for the tier 2 straight out. Of course, living armor has been already used, so mid tier 2 might still fall in the favor of myth. But fixers, if he gets the tier 2 in return, it's going to be a worthy, tra worthy trade. Yeah, well, uh, can they get the deny? <laughs> no. Ember Spirit not able to get the deny, but he will just quickly flame Spirit out of there. Meanwhile, uh, top lane. Naga Siren forcing out a few TPs. She brought down the tower to uh, a little bit under half health. And so I guess it was interesting that Kingdom, they really wanted to defend their other towers uh, a lot, but when it came to that middle one, they, they didn't really care as much. They just kind of let it go. Yeah, I mean, you know that you can just uh, sit back and relax. You definitely have it late game, like you mentioned before as well already. Just Ember Spirit and Naga Siren and Naga now. 
Radiant's gonna be finished in about 60 gold. So once he gets that, or actually never mind me, he just got it now, so... Lots of farm incoming. Uh, uh, sub 90 minute Radiance, definitely not bad on the Naga Siren, considering she also went for Drums of Endurance earlier on. I mean, 122 last hits, and uh, a single kill to your name, that's pretty damn impressive. So, um, Fixer's doing a wonderful job on this Naga Siren this game. It most certainly well, is. Well, bottom lane, it, it looks like the Treant was in trouble, but he's just doing a lot of scouting, uh, using that Nature's Guy's ability. I mean, it always pays off to just have vision, know where the enemy is. Unfortunately, the Kingdom, they don't have the best jump in at the moment. I mean, Tudi has a Blink Dagger, so Blink Doom is always going to be there. But, it's not like Myth. Just, they, they have the Wombo combo. It's so hard to actually initiate into that. Yeah, that's true. Maybe they need the Naga Siren for initiation, I think. Or, or counter initiation, maybe even more importantly. Because, you know, once you throw that in, like, the Black Hole or the Ravage, uh, you want to be able to, uh, you know, mitigate as much of the damage during that downtime as possible. So this could end up being a very big engagement. Like we said, Naga does have the Radiance. The Myth Trust is starting to, to move back a little bit. Actually, Enigma, a lot of his mana being burned uh, thanks to the Necronomicon minions. Yeah, and actually, <laughs> the Viper just gave away that I have a sentry down here as well. Smashy, he ran past it into vision for a little while, and the Viper just threw his ultimate on straight away. So now, Viper Strike is on cooldown. The tree and didn't even get hit because he got out of uh, vision range at the same time. But Myth, they're doing a sneaky smoke and maybe it's even gonna work out. Mm, maybe. We'll have to wait and see. If, yeah, if they can kind of get the jump on, like, uh, you know, one of these series, whether it be the Doom, Ember Spirit, even Apparition. And uh, that's a lot of the team fight that kind of uh, Kingdom really wants to rely on. That's not gonna be there. And the Naga Siren Illusion is gonna kind of scout out uh, the smoke. And uh, the Doom actually revealed it. But he blinks away very fast, so overall no harm, no foul. Kingdom know it's coming their way, and they just uh, back up into a bit of a safer position. Yeah, it's, I think with Trust, they still have a pretty decent opening window before the Naga gets kind of unkillable and just too big of a nuisance to deal with. I mean, Lakels, he might be going for a pipe. He has to hood the Defiance at least, so probably pipe in the making. Necro level 2 is going to be a Noki as well, as level 3 is going to be finished on my pro. So once they get those extra nec necro books, their pushing power is still going to be extremely strong. So every time they have their ultimates, they can definitely force the issue. But if they should suffer another loss like at the tier 2 top lane, it's going to be too hard. But oh, they go in. Alright, here we go. Tide Hunter using a very nice Ravage. Ice Blast will connect as well, but 2D, he is the first to fall. Followed by Ember Spirit, so well, the Black Hole definitely helping out a lot for Myth's Trust. And all of a sudden, Kingdom, they didn't have the Naga Siren for that fight. And they are paying for it very hard, most likely uh, with this tier 2 tower on the bottom lane. Yeah, <laughs> that, that team fight was just crashing at the moment. Kingdom, they went in, they were the ones getting the initiation, but Titan of course, having a blink dagger, just counter initiation, perfect ravage, made sure that Lakel suffers no more damage than only the Doom ticking down. So, we'll see if they can just get something on top of that. I mean, they already got the tier 2, so that's nice. And if they get Roshan as well. It's going to be huge, just to help them push high ground, just having the Aegis, having the Viper in the front line, just tick away at the tower. Ah, so... I don't know, uh, Kingdom, they, they have to know about Roshan, they're even throwing out the Ice Blast. It's going to hit a lot of those heroes, actually. This may even force Myth's Trust back, as uh, everybody from Kingdom, they're coming in, and maybe they'll go ahead and initiate. There's a stomp onto Micro, also nice double chains as well. Drake are doing a lot of damage overgrowth. Blocking everybody from Myth Trust that's still remaining into place. It looks like they'll probably take out Lakel's Smashy. He will fall, but uh, a very, very good trade for Kingdom. Maybe they can even come in and get Roshan. He's so low on health. Yeah, there were three buybacks on Myth. I really don't think they're actually going to make it here as well. So Myth, all they gained from the last fight, they just lost and even a little bit oh, extra. Man. Even in, in the buybacks, that's terrible too. Even this. Look at this Enigma, he's so low on health. Will he actually die to the burn damage? Yes, he does! Naga Siren with the illusions, taking down an enemy support here at 23 minutes into the match. Holy crap, that fight. Let's just look at the net worth all of a sudden. Naga Siren, almost 3,000 ahead of the Invoker, thanks to the buyback. Aghanim Scepter finished on Fruits on the Ancient Apparition, plus a level 2 ultimate on him. 
it's just so huge and the Battle Fury also faced on Drakan's Ember. I, I don't even dare look at the graphs now just to see the swing that happened from that fight. Alright, well, you may be too afraid, but I'll go ahead and check them out. 3k swing as far as experience goes towards Kingdom, and uh, the gold's actually completely leveled off. So, not as bad as you'd expect. I still feel like it's anyone's game. Myth Trust do have the Wombo combo on their team. Uh, the problem is, what, when this Naga actually joins these fights, it doesn't feel like Myth Trust uh, can really do uh, a huge amount uh, against uh, Kingdom. We'll have another TP coming bottom lane. This time from the Invoker. So now three bottom. They want to defend, but Kingdom. They got four of their members here. Throwing out the chains. Doom onto the Tide Hunter as well. That is no Ravage available for this fight. Black Hole's still down for another 20 seconds. Aim for action Chanel. Not going to really hit anyone. My pro, the first to fall in this fight. In Kingdom, if they're smart, they'll probably just back away. They did lose 2D on the back end of this fight. And with another TP coming in from Lakels, I think it's just safe for them to kind of uh, move away here. Also, uh, something to note, Fixers, uh, just, you know, continuing to push this bottom lane. So getting uh, a lot of work done as far as map control goes and keeping these lanes pushed out uh, during that engagement, even if uh, the t bottom tier 1 tower has been saved by Myth Trust. Yeah, and with the Necrobox on cooldown on Myth as well, they can't really pressure the tier freeze. And of course, Invoker is there, but Trakan, he wants to go for more KYT. Searing chains up, will the flame guard be enough? He pops the Ravage. Will there be enough lockdown? Oh, nope, he just remnants away. <laughs> oh no, he remnants back? What? Oh no, well, he had another one on the, on the other side of the map. Didn't realize it, but uh, the Ancient Apparition, oh, that will actually finish off the Tidehunter. Maybe even the Lich. I think Lich is okay, but... Uh, He'll definitely be in the danger zone as far as health is concerned. Yeah, actually, Noki, he's the one in trouble as well now. Riptide it up, will the Radiants do it again? He pops the mech. He's gonna be safe for the time being, but the tier 3 is taking a huge amount of damage. Not a quarter of an HP, and Fixers, he has the Aegis plus the Song of the Siren. So, yeah, easy escape. Um, also, something to note the Lich did die to the, um, the Ancient Apparition Ice Blast. He got under 10% health, so down he went. Kingdom, really, they are just taking complete control over this game. It's now 18 to 11, uh, just under 26 minutes into the match. Uh, the, only the bottom two t uh, towers are left for Myth Trust's end, and uh, there's only a single tier 2 tower left on Kingdom's end as well, but they're okay with that, man. They got that Radiance Naga. By the way, highest KDA fruits on the Ancient Operation 6, 0, and 7. And 6 yeah, for Oh, man. Making the sick plays. The Ember Spirit and Doom have been dying a lot in the these engagements, but that's okay, man. It's it's really okay for Kingdom. Yeah, it definitely. I mean, just looking at the net worth, it already tells the tale. I mean, Naga Siren, soon to be 5k probably ahead of anybody. At the moment, sitting at 4k, but it's such a huge lead, and he has 4k gold in the bank. What do you actually think his next item choice will be? Um. I mean, there, there's really a lot of options you have as far as the Naga Siren goes. I personally like getting the Manta style next. Uh, just, you know, creating some extra illusions. And yeah, he's picked up the Yasha, so most likely the Manta coming up next. Meanwhile, uh, during that entire uh, segment about the Naga Siren items, they picked up the Tree and Protector. There was a Sentry Ward uh, just kind of here in the Radiant Jungle. Amber Spirit getting a little cheeky, but just quickly uh, spirits away. Yeah, I actually didn't get to even see if Mithras were smoked or not, but judging by the reactions, they knew that the Treant was around. They popped the Midnight Pulse here to just clear the tree, sentry down, they even activated Necro level 3 just to make sure they have vision. And it was really an easy kill, but my pro mid lane, I mean, he got hit by the Ice Blast, the Regents burn is there as well. He activates the Ghost Walk, but I don't think he's gonna shatter, but just Illusions plus one ultimate, which is global, gives so much grief to the Myth. That was close. A few more seconds on that apparition. I'll, maybe if it was like a, a scepter upgrade for this apparition, which he... Oh, never mind. He actually just... He already has his scepter. Never mind. But, uh, yeah. That's something to be concerned about in the future. Uh, that combination is, is going to do absolute work against Myth Trust, especially considering, like, the Enigma, the Invoker, and uh, Lich. Not the tankiest heroes in the game. I, I guess the, the Invoker is decently tanky. He does have a lot of health, but uh, overall... Uh, these guys are going to be uh, very concerned about the, that combination. Yeah, now at least Lakels has his pipe finished, so that will help just mitigate a lot of the magic damage coming out. But if, let's say, he just gets jumped by 2D, blink, doom up on Viper, no mech, no... I mean, he doesn't even have a mech, I'm just used to, <laughs> so used to the Vipers having mechs, but... 
still no pipe. It's gonna be such a huge aspect already in the fight. Of course, I think Doom or maybe I, Doom and the Tide Hunter or maybe Enigma is probably the wiser choice though. Yeah, just check out bottom lane. Fixer is already going to work on the strange barracks using those illusions. He throws out a net as well onto the invoker, but uh, no real follow up. And yeah, it's only a matter of time before the Snaga Siren just uh, he'll have those extra illusions and he'll just continue pushing out the lanes. Uh, something to note though, the Aegis did expire just now on the Naga Siren, so she doesn't have that extra insurance policy to, to keep her in these fights. Yeah, actually, KYT at least on the Tide Hunter is working reasonably fast towards his refresher orb, just needs a recipe for it. Although that's also like one and a half thousand away still. But once he gets that, there's at, at the moment at least only one BKB on the side of Kingdom and not a single sign of more to come. Unless Ember Spirit with his 3.1k just saves up for a full up BKB. Yeah, maybe. Well, Doom, speaking of BKBs, Doom has his now. Uh, that's, uh, I think, recently complete. So he'll be a lot tankier in these team fights. And I guess if the Naga Siren's not with them, he is kind of the uh, the real initiator for them. Uh, Train Protector doesn't have a Blink Dagger. He decided to go for the uh, Force Stop this game. And holy crap, Lich is dead. And I think he just died to the illusions. Indeed, he did. I mean, <laughs> Fruits even sent an Ice Blast flying to the base just in case if Lich were to just be able to run far enough but man fixer he's just a complete baller i mean even kyt just doesn't really want to take a fight with him <laughs> uh it's getting to that that point of no return i feel the naga siren duty, he finds lakels tuned up immediately blink in war stomped up lakels can you actually escape a level death for the mini stun mech is there from noki but Trakan comes in with smashy they get the slow one noki at least and they can't make up their mind which one to go for at the moment Oh, and they missed the, the Searing Chains as well onto Lakel, so not locked in the place. He'll use the pipe, turn it around, throw the Viper Strike onto Doom. But uh, while they are committing the overgrowth, they want this kill, they're going to get it. Yeah, I mean, it took them actually a really long time to get that. Of course, Naga Siren wasn't even there, a huge source of their damage. But Viper on the sidelines has buyback at the very least, so if Kingdom can force it, they're going to be just once again so much better off. Yeah, the Snaga Siren already 2,700 gold in her coffers. I wouldn't be surprised if she went for like a heart next uh, as the next item since so she does a lot of damage already and just uh, having that extra survivability will keep those supports really on their toes and, and forcing them to kind of stay away. Ice Blast uh, all comes out, will miss though. This Tidehunter just simply blinks away. But I'm feeling like a Kingdom, they want to go ahead and just uh, finish off this bottom lane of Rax. A lot of them are positioned around here or at least... Uh, you know, faking and giving some space for uh, Fixers to go ahead and push this bottom tier 2 tower. Yeah, Fixers has been doing a really good job, like, throughout the entire game, just split pushing it out, getting some towers, getting some global gold. For example, once early on, when we saw the team fight happen in the tier 2 mid, Fixers took down both the tier 1 as well as the tier 2 during the push that Myth did. So that's actually way too much just space overall against the Naga, but Myth, they still have their Wombo combo. If Kingdom, if they just make one huge slip and just grouping up a little bit too much, they might pay the price for it and just completely get team wiped. But of course, that's something that Myth can't really hope to happen. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> I also, it just feels like these Naga Siren Illusions, they're just kind of, uh, they're throwing Myth Trust into like a ring around the Verzi. They're going to defend top lane, then they hit mid, then they go bot. These illusions are everywhere, man. Up to 4,200 gold now. Naga Siren, she's really balling at this point. Uh, man, it just, it's its really hitting the difficult uh, point for Myth Trust to really do anything. And we'll see the Ancient Apparition Ice Plus fly out mid lane. Uh, it doesn't connect on the close, but the, uh, I guess, uh, the Frostbite still uh, hits on him as well. And these illusions will just slowly chase him down, force him away for the time being. And uh, they'll move from there just towards the middle lane and continue pushing out uh, the mid lane. Well, I mean, Lakels is definitely the tankiest. I mean, he has 60% of uh, magic resistance on him. So it's gonna be hard to bring him down. But just look at the creeps. The Naga Siren just continuously fixers, giving more and more momentum on this top lane. And yes, the melee barracks, they just reach up slowly, but it's not fast enough by the looks of it. Ah, even the. <laughs> look at the Strikens just coming here, throwing in a few casual right clicks. And the illusions, they're getting drummed up. 
Tornado goes down, but uh, will it be enough? Oh man, the melee barracks down to 80 health at this point. It will slowly regenerate, like you mentioned, Coucher, but it's certainly not in healthy shape. And Hero Catapult, two more right clicks, come on, you can do it! Oh, nope. Yeah, there's an Alka Siren song, though, look at that! Just sending the illusions to finish off that melee barracks. We'll see a fortification used just to save it. Uh, man, when you're using fortification against illusions, you know it's a desperate situation. Yeah, and it's not like Kingdom lose too much. I mean, it's only one minute cooldown at this point in time on the Song of Siren, but they might get to kill the Black Hole oh. on the Drakon! Yep, throwing down the meter as well with the Deafening Blast. Easy kill secure it onto Ember Spirit. Which, by the way, has his second Battle Fury at this point, so not going for the Daedalus, just focusing as much as possible on uh, that creep clearing uh, potential, I guess. It's, I mean, not a bad choice. I mean, he can farm up all day long, and with this, actually, he needs to farm up a lot of Ancients, as well as the jungle, probably, since Fixers is farming up everything else. So the Battle Fury will just help him speed up the jungle farm and make it so that it doesn't take too much damage while doing so. But... I did see a refresher picked up on KYT and the Tide Hunter now. So even though they don't have Black Hole, they have the Double Ravage and the only hero not going to be affected by it is going to be 2D if he manages to activate the BKB in time. Uh, but, I mean, I, I feel like Double Ravage is normally a game changer, but will it even be enough here against Kingdom? That's the problem. They're, they're not really going to be uh, taking on engagements. Uh, they're just going to continuously split push. And yeah, Naga Siren has the Heart of Trust recipe in her inventory, so that does look to be like the, the next time she's going to pick up. Tier 2, or the Tier uh, 3 melee barracks, this just may end up dying to the illusions. There is the backdoor protection, but once the, the creep wave comes in, uh, it will eventually fall. Yeah, but looks like they maybe even want to fight in the mid lane 2D. He's on the high ground, just waiting for his opening. Oh man, look Doom at when the Tide Hunter will just decide to fight. I, they, uh, okay, there's the Doom on the Viper. We'll see if he can do anything else. Chains on him as well. And Tide Hunter, there's Ravage number one. We'll see Meteor come down onto Draken as well. They really want to take him down. Second Ravage. It's a double kill. They've taken down the Apparition. Now the Doom. And, well, there's the Overgrowth. Buying a little bit of time, but I think this Tramp Protector... No, he actually gets away. There's a buyback on the Doom. And Myth Trust, man, they are getting desperate. They want to push right down the Tier 3. But Naga Siren, look at her. She's going straight for the Tier 4s. Is I this a mistake? I think is Naga Siren won't be fast enough. There's a Necrolayer yeah, Priest, but... double of them, Forge Priest up as well, with the Eidolons helping out the tier 4s. Oh my god, Fixers, his illusions aren't doing? tanky enough yet. She's using the regeneration rune, okay, she'll go ahead and TP home now, but... Oh, I mean, what a way to throw the game. If Mistrust actually end up winning this, that would be absolutely insane. There's the second tower, and comes Naga Siren though. If this is a team wipe on Mistrust, then this is possibly game ending. Oh, they just popped the mech, they're completely fine. Overgrowth is on cooldown as well. Fixers, it's trying to do anything at all, but I don't know if it's enough. He doesn't have the heart either. Oh man, alright, Draken's coming in with a lot of DPS. The Vice Blast, that'll finish off another, so it's three dead on Mithrust, four down. There's a buyback from the Invoker. There are three buybacks available on Mithrust, and I suspect that a lot of those will be used, but... Uh, look, <laughs> look at Kingdom's base. They have the tier 3 barracks, but the towers are dead, the tier 4s and the tier 3 in the middle are all gone. And King Nemea just end up going straight for Roshan. What a wacky turn of events for Kingdom and Myth Trust. Yeah, of course, I mean, a little bit unfortunate for Myth Trust there because going for the Ancient like that, they really didn't have too much space to just spread out, so... Just searing chains into a Freeman Ice Blast, I think it was, and can they actually stop the Rosh with only the two of them? If they lose their lives now, Invoker, his buyback is on cooldown. Oh, man. Oh, they get the Doom on the Enigma, though. So, no ultimate there. Kingdom, they get up a lot of heroes. Really low on health. The Naga will fall. She instantly buys back. But, Myth Trusta, uh, they are, they're, I guess, uh, somewhat holding on at this point. These, these engagements, man, they're, they're feeling a little bit throwier than me. They're feeling a little 3-2-2, two, two almost. Yeah, there's another Sun Strike. Ember Spirit doesn't get hit, but the Necro Archer comes in. And they stop the Roche. Just two versus five. Incredible Chaos Meteor from the Evoker, to be honest, with the Deafening Blast. And oh, they find yeah. out Smashy as well, Noki, can he get the solo kill? Necro Warrior gives him True Sight. There's the Malphite as well, it should be a kill or will it? Drakon comes in. Oh, <laughs> Roshan, Roshan with the deny. And uh, Kingdom Beast coming in, he'll get the kill on the Enigma, but gives up his life as well. To the Tidehunter, to the Viper. It's a buyback from the Enigma. 
Naga Siren, she's actually managed to co-op the Tier 4 Tower in the meantime in Mythtrust's space and has started to go the, the work on that Ancient, while at the same time now focusing on the Tier 3 Tower in the mid lane. Oh man, these illusions, they gotta be a pain in the butt for Mythtrust. Yeah, they most certainly do it. And to be honest, I have to say, when I saw Naga Siren getting the farm that she was, I was like, yeah, this game is gonna be boring as all hell and probably over, but not the case, Myth, they just... Made a wise decision going down mid lane a couple of minutes ago, and they won a huge fight there. A lot of it had to do, I think, with the Doombringer just blinking in and getting the Doom onto Lakels, whereas Tidehunter just came in, blink, ravage, refresher orb, double ravage, and Viper. Before he got doomed, he managed to activate the pipe as well in that fight. So he could still just right click away and kind of survive all of it. And of course, I mean, Fixers wasn't there really at the time, but now, with his heart finished, does Myth have enough to just clear off the illusions even? <laughs> I think that as long as Kingdom just kind of plays it a little bit safer and focuses on taking the, the racks and the objectives, then they, they should be okay. Uh, Ice Blast though, I believe, from the Apparition actually kills off uh, the Enigma, uh, along with the help of these uh, Naga illusions, which are just almost single-handedly dealing uh, with Myth Trust's lineup of 2D. He goes and throws another Doom onto the Viper with a, a lot of these illusions chasing him down. Meanwhile, on the other side, near the Roshan Pit, there is an overgrowth from Triant Protector, Ravage from the Tidehunter, but it's used purely defensively. And, oh man, that Ice Blast, or not the Ice Blast, but uh, the ultimate, the Chain Frost, did a lot of damage. The Kells low on health. He'll end up dying, but there's the uh, Ravage once again coming out from Tidehunter, still in a very uh, defensive uh, type of use. He'll end up dying though as well. Kingdom just able to chase him down. That's four dead, and both are the other one left. And if we look inside the main base of Myth Trust, it's going from bad to worse. My pro, he has a BKB, but down to 41 health. Fixers finishes him off, and with that, we're going to see the Ancient Fall. The GG is called by Myth Trust, and Kingdom win game one. Yeah. <laughs> the Naga Siren, they just didn't have what it took to clear off the illusions, even. Once the heart came off to me, 3k HP. Viper really isn't a damaging machine, especially if you have a Vanguard and a Pipe and that's it. But all in all, a really exciting game. And just wish we could have seen a proper double ravage into like Chaos Meteor once again, because that was really their main source of damage. But guys, it's only game number one in a two game series, so we're gonna head into game number two's lobby momentarily here. And if you enjoyed us, be sure to follow us on Hefla TV, on all the social media, as well as of course this channel and Hefla TV 2 and Hefla Moke on Twitch. All the links are below the stream, and if you like the casters, it's at Coucher for me, and at Yeah Whiplash for my co-caster, but we're heading into game two, so hope you'll stay tuned.